welcome back to another episode of The Six Sexy. If you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button down below. And if you're not new, welcome back. In today's episode, I want to have a chat to you about my top tips for getting through any hospital stay, long or short, and making your experience less negative. So, as you can hear of the rustle behind me, we have a new member of the family, Milo. So if you hear his little jingle collar going off, I apologise, but he is only 11 weeks old, so there's not much that I can do. I, most of the video might be me getting up and getting him off things. So yes, as I was saying, um, today's video is gonna be my top tips for any hospital stay, either long or short. Hospital stays aren't enjoyable at the best of times, but there are things that you can do to make your experience a little less negative so that you don't dread going to the hospital every time. So my first tip for getting through any hospital stay is to wear comfortable clothes. Whether you're going in for a day surgery or a procedure, make sure that the clothes you're wearing, you're going to be able to sit and lie in them for long periods of time. So whenever I go to hospital, I know that I'm going to be on a bed with my arms extended for a good two to three hours. I won't be able to move much, feed or drink water without help. So I always make sure that the clothes that I'm wearing are loose fitting so that I can move around and get comfortable if I need to. A nice loose shirt or a sundress. I always recommend not to wear tight jeans or um, really, really tight bras if you're a female um, and just to ensure that you can move around and you're relatively comfortable. My second tip for uh, getting through any hospital stay long or short is to bring music with you. Now I didn't realise how important this tip was until I forgot my earphones at home and went to hospital and the needles were going in and I could feel everything. Music is a form of escapism for a lot of people. It puts us in a special mood. Sometimes when we think of old songs, we think of old loved ones. Music can invoke all sorts of different emotions and memories, so why wouldn't it be able to help you in a time of need? No judgement, but I absolutely love Ariana Grande, so most of my playlist is Ariana Grande and Christina Aguilera. If I hear music that puts me in a particular mood, it's a lot easier for me to get through any process involving needles and any process involving pain, essentially. So definitely bring your favourite playlist along with you. I personally have a subscription to Spotify. I pay, I think, something like $12 a month for that, and that basically basically gives me an unlimited access to all sorts of songs, so that is definitely a um, lifesaver for me. Music also kind of mentally reduces the pain that I'm experiencing at the time, so yes of course the pain is still present, but I'm not as aware as I would be if I could hear everyone else's voices around me. Hospitals can be extremely chaotic and, and hectic, you're in an environment that is uh, not normal, for luckily for me, I get my own private room, but I remember back a couple of years ago in the old hospital, um, it was just a ward with seven other people and everyone could see what was going on. If you were like having needles or you're having a private procedure, the only privacy you really got was a curtain being drawn across the room. So for me, um, having music kind of helps me feel like I'm more at home, helps me feel more settled and comfortable and kind of eases my anxiety around uh, going into uh, abnormal environments like hospitals because they're not really fun for anyone. My third tip, especially if you're having anything like dialysis or apheresis, if you have to have regular blood transfusions or exchanges, is to always get to know your nurse. One pet peeve that I have is when you go into a hospital and you've been going there for years and you know there might be a new nurse who doesn't know you and he or she might be talking about you in third person. So for example, I had this happen to me last week when I went in for my blood exchange and there was a new nurse there who didn't know who I was and I introduced myself and tried to build a bit of a rapport with her and she was asking another nurse um, questions about me and using not using my name, just saying things like, oh, well, she has this, doesn't she? And what time does she have this? And it's like, I was sitting right there and I could have answered those questions for her and I did. So I think it's really important to have an active approach in your own health. Um, although they are the experts in your care, it's really important to um, have an understanding with your nurse that you want to be proactively involved in your care plan, essentially. So always introduce yourself, always try and find common ground, get to know someone. He was chewing on a piece of the couch, so I thought I would bring him over. Um, obviously, if you have the same nurses every time, this isn't going to be an issue for you because 
people probably already know who you are and are familiar with your care plan, but if you have a whole foreign team of nurses or doctors and you're feeling a bit anxious and unsure, always make sure to introduce yourself and you know get to know the person that's looking after you because that's super important in making you feel comfortable, making the other person feel comfortable as well and ensuring that you have the best care possible. My fourth tip for making hospital stays um, as good as we can is to uh, bring someone along that makes you feel comfortable, whether that's a parent or your partner or a close friend, make sure that you have a support person there if you can um, to make the experience better for you. Um, having someone there not only kind of calms you down and pulls focus away from what's happening around you, but it also can bring you happiness. Oh, hello. Hey, that's my partner. He always comes to hospital with me. Um, always make sure that I have something to eat and drink as well, because sometimes when we go to hospital alone, we can often forget to do things like that. We're obviously swept up in that anxiety and, you know, being in a new environment and having a painful procedure that sometimes we forget to look after ourselves. So having someone there to remind us to stay hydrated and to eat properly and um, basically just look after ourselves is really, really important. So strongly recommend that if you do have someone that can support you, whether it's a friend or a family member, to take them along with you um, because they will make the whole process run a lot smoother than if you were going in alone. The biggest, you know, realization that I had going to hospital is that it doesn't last forever. Yes, it's going to be a lifelong um, procedure that I'm going to need to have, but it's more about my perspective on things that helped me to cope with it. So I don't see it as this big, scary time of the month thing. It's now just a, okay, I've got hospital booked on Monday morning at 9am, it is what it is, make sure I have my earphones packed in my bag and my Spotify is ready to go, make sure I'm wearing some comfortable clothes and make sure that I have lots of water and um, maybe a snack to eat. <laughs> running up and down the hallway behind you. Yeah, so I think for me getting into getting into a routine is also really important. So making sure that you have everything prepared in the morning and that you're ready for the day ahead is going to make your transition going to hospital a lot better. Um, and something that I haven't mentioned but is also equally important to making a hospital stay um, better is to do something enjoyable before you go in or even after but generally i'm so exhausted after hospital and need to go straight home to bed um, that i find that if i do something really enjoyable before my hospital trip i don't feel like my day is wasted and i always used to have this feeling like when i'd go to hospital um, that i'm wasting my day when in reality it's a procedure that i need to be able to survive so it's not a waste at all but it's it's a psychological thing, you feel like you're not being productive on your day off, um, you're spending it in a crap environment. Um, so the way I combated that feeling of you know, unproductiveness or feeling like I'm wasting my day was to do something cool beforehand. So whether that was catching up for coffee with a friend or um, you know, going having a little bit of retail therapy or even you know, um, catching up on some housework. Doing something before hospital made me feel like my day hadn't my day wasn't just going to be spent doing that and being in hospital, it was also spent being productive in my own way. So definitely get into a habit of, you know, getting all of your creature comforts ready before you go to hospital. I always recommend like bringing a hospital bag with you. So like maybe a nice big duffel bag where you've got everything prepared and you don't have to like worry about it. And a few more things that can make your hospital stay um, a little bit easier. And I haven't included these in my um, top tips just because I believe that most hospitals should be providing this. Um, if, especially if you're having needles, I find that um, hot or rather warmed up like heat bags on your veins can really help not only to provide comfort if you're having um, needles, um, but also to enlarge the veins so that you're getting a better line. If you're having blood or any other kind of fluid, it actually helps the blood to travel through the vein, um, but it also provides comfort, so it takes that sharp sting out of any kind of catheter. Uh, so yeah, definitely hot wheat bags on your arms can help um, make your stay a little bit easier. Um, but yeah, my, so those are my top tips for you guys. Um, so we touched on quite a few things today, but I hope they helped you. Uh, I've been wanting to do a video like this for a really long time. Going to hospital for me is something that happens every single month. So I like to think that I'm a little bit of an expert when it comes to um, getting prepared for things like that.